Morning everyone, David here, I hope you're well. I've had quite a few comments and messages uh, asking me to make a video about river watercraft and explain a little bit about the different areas of the river and what they look like, what fish I'd expect to find there and what methods I'd use to tackle those particular areas. So what we've got in front of us here is an area of shallow water, lots and lots of rocks and this is what people really describe as pocket water as it, there's lots of little pockets of fishable areas now a lot of people would just skip through this and go straight to the deeper pools but it will actually hold fish and it's likely to hold some smaller wild brown trout where they're likely to be located is just in these pockets of slightly deeper water just enough to get down in amongst it maybe just off behind the rocks or located in some of the little seams of current. The best way to tackle this would be with a fly like a small north country spider, a, a small unweighted nymph such as a pheasant tail. And you just want a rod's length of line and, and probably about eight or nine feet of leader. And just tap your line upstream turn the leader over and just let the fly very quickly run down some of these seams of current that are in between the rocks and what you'd be looking for is the end of the line stopping your fly is only on the water for, for two or three seconds and then with your wading stick in hand you'd wade further upstream and keep exploring and probing all these different pockets and seams of current with your fly and here we've got a classic lie for a trout, overhanging tree, a slightly undercut bank and a small pool just located under this tree ranch. And here you'd expect to find maybe a small wild brown trout or, or maybe even a larger one um, as it's got quite a nice piece of cover there under the tree. The areas I'd try fishing here are, well, all of the main body of the pool certainly here but I'd focus on these areas here where you can see there's a quicker line of bubbles flowing into the strip flowing into the pool and these quicker lines of bubbles here indicate an area of concentrated current and areas of concentrated current will will concentrate food as well so it's an ideal location for a fish to be lying as it's going to get the food brought right over it the way I'd probably tackle this, it's fairly hard to tackle because of the overhanging tree, but probably an upstream nymph of a medium weight or a lighter check nymph um, just tapped under the tree and let it trundle down some of these current seams into the pool. Now we've got a nice big rock here in the middle of the stream. Um, a lot of people think that a fish will be immediately behind a rock but that's not probably going to be the case the the currents behind a rock tend to be quite complex they're quite a vortex and a bit of a washing machine effect and what fish really like is a nice predictable line of food flowing over them so you can probably just make out here the current turns into a v either side of the rock and we call this fishing the v's and the fish are more likely to be into that v-shape of current just behind the rock where there's a nice predictable line of food or if it's deep enough actually in front of the rock because as the water travels down the stream and hits the rock it bounces back and so there's an area of reduced water pressure just immediately in front of a rock which can also hold a fish you'd tackle a rock fishing around a rock depending on the type of water you're in so if it's slower deeper water and you can see fish rising probably a dry fly um, shallower stuff probably a nymph or a spider right here we've got a riffle a riffle is a fast turbulent area of water normally on a gradient and a riffle will normally lead down into a pool or a glide riffles are great areas to fish there's a number of reasons why firstly the water's turbulent, so the fish can't see out, so when you approach them, you're hidden. Secondly, fish like riffles because they're getting first dibs on the food that's entering the riffle down this fast water. 
Because the water's turbulent as well, if you're a beginner, then your splashy cast, um, you, if you stumble while you're wading, all those little indiscretions, they're kind of hidden by the turbulent water. So they're excellent places for beginners. The way I'd approach fishing on a riffle, you could use an upstream uh, nymph, uh, a pheasant tail, maybe with a bead head if it's just getting down into some slightly deeper water or an unweighted nymph if it's shallower. Certainly um, a North Country spider fished upstream is an excellent way of tackling it as well. Once the riffle deepens out into the, into the glide or the pool, then you might need a heavier nymph or a check nymph. You can also fish in with a, a, a dry fly on the surface as well, but I'd recommend something like a clink hammer, which is excellent in, in fast turbulent water. And you might want to wait till you see a fish or two rise in a riffle before you start putting a dry on. If you can't see anything rising, certainly tackle it with a nymph or a spider. And here we've got a classic pool. The water enters through the riffle at the top and then runs down and you can see near the wall at the side there there's a nice speedy bit of current that's indicated by the moving white bubbles and then in this section of the pool here the water actually back eddies round so it's coming the reverse the opposite to the main flow of the river now the area i'm going to concentrate if i was fishing here would definitely be in the fast water over by the far side indicated by the moving bubbles again fish like a predictable line of food they like to sit and wait for food to be brought over them so that's definitely the area i'd expect fish to be lying you're going to catch all sorts in a pool like this you're going to get some really big fish because it's nice and deep as well as some smaller ones uh, maybe scattered around too certainly trout certainly grayling and maybe the odd surprise as well that you don't know about the way i tackle a pool like this firstly you've got to observe it a little bit and see if you can see it, see any rising fish in the back reaches of the pool where it's nice and slow is ideal dry fly water. As the speed of the pool increases it turns more to nymphing water or a check nymph if it's deep and then at the riffle at the very head of the pool I'd be looking at a lighter nymph or maybe a spider in that faster water. Right here we've got an absolute classic slow moving pool almost canal like section of river and th these are the areas where beginners get sucked into fishing most of the time because they can see rising fish but they are one of the hardest places to catch trout and grayling on a fly because the fish have got all the time in the world to examine your fly and also every little splashy cast or indiscretion in your casting is visibly showing up also with your wading any little stumble or movement gets transmitted through the pool the waves travel through um, you will get some big fish in these pools but they are harder to fish um, tend to be suited more to dry fly fishing the only real way you're going to tackle it on a nymph is it by setting the depth using an indicator or actually by active nymphing so stripping the nymph through the pool well that can be effective you're going to get some big brown trout in here you're going to get some grayling and you're going to pick up the odd coarse fish or two things like chub, perch, even barbel. Right, I'm stood below a little pool here and as you can see this section here is kind of where the pool finishes and we call this the lip of the pool and you get a faster little you get a faster area of water just on this lip section here and often there'll be a fish just sat in this lip area here um, You've got to be careful with your presentation here because the water's quick and you'll easily get drag. But an upstream spider or a nymph or a dry fly, maybe with a slack line cast just in this lip section, can often yield results. And we've got a lovely bubble stream here. As the water runs down the river, it gets churned up around all the rocks and the riffles and bubbles form on the surface. And these bubbles in an even river would flow down evenly, but in areas where the current's concentrated, the bubbles will be concentrated into a small stream, and we call that a bubble stream. And you can see one here just flowing past the tree branch. And an area of bubbles in a bubble stream indicates an area of concentrated current. And concentrated current means concentrated food. So this is an ideal spot for a fish to lie 
it's fairly shallow here so probably going to be a small wild brown trout or something but certainly I'd expect to get something in this bubble stream area the ways that approach it from downstream upstream nymph maybe a medium nymph something that's going to just get down amongst the rocks or maybe a spider or certainly if I can see them um, rising I put a dry on as well we've got a fast deep run here I've had a prob with my wading stick and it's got some real depth to it but the water's moving at pace now in these sections of rivers with fast deep runs you're going to get all sorts you're going to get your grayling you're going to get some trout and you're going to get some big ones too it's perfect holding water as the fish can just sit sheltered behind a rock and intercept food as it tumbles down with the current the best way of tackling a fast deep run like this is going to be with a check nymph something nice and heavy that's going to get right down to the bottom start at the bottom of the pool check nymph in and work your way up and you want to be fishing the moving water in the fast sections keep probing away with those heavy check nymphs waiting for the line to stop and striking at everything remember when you check nymph in if you're not touching the bottom occasionally you're not fishing deep enough so either change your fly for some heavy ones or if you have to add a split shot to get more depth <laughs> 